Has Christianity always been one of the religions in the world to you? Oh, hallelujah. Christianity is not a religion. Neither is it a joining of a church and doing the Christian things like praying and giving and so on. Hallelujah. Christianity is the outworking of God's own kind of life received into the spirit of a man. Whoa. This divine life in the heart of a man makes him righteous, keeps him healthy, divinely guarded in life, prosperous and victorious. It gives you the ability to enjoy intimate fellowship with the Father and have dominion on this earth. Hallelujah. This is what awaits you if you will wholeheartedly believe that Jesus is the Son of God raised from the dead and personally confess him as the Lord of your life. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Join Dr. David Binder on the Good Life Devotion every Monday to Friday on this channel and receive truth that will usher you into exhibiting the divine life. Kindly note that you can enjoy the Good Life Devotion on these other platforms at their stated times. Do choose the most convenient one for you or switch to another in case of a broadcast challenge with your usual platform. By all means, don't miss the Good Life Devotion any day. Now, welcome to today's episode with Dr. David Bindon. Wow, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. How are you doing? I know you are doing well because God's number one nutrient for quality living is the word of God. So he said, as newborn babies desire the sincere milk of the word. Then it says that I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, Acts 20, 32, which is able to build you and give you inheritance in Christ. So as long as your mouth is open wide, in other words, your spirit, soul, and body are ready to receive God's word, God has an unlimited access to transform you forever. I know your life is moving from one level to the other in the positive light. And you are joining the sons of God who are maturing into our full image to manifest, to bring liberty to our world. On this note, I welcome you to today's special episode of our favorite Glad Devotion. The Glad Devotion is a daily devotional teaching of the truth of God's word aimed at bringing the entire body of Christ in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. We also bring you nuggets that will cause you to enjoy that amazing life that Jesus brought because they do not know yet. Think that all there is to Christianity is a life of struggling here and living an ordinary life. Then when you die and go to heaven, then you have all the goodies there. No. In fact, when this age ends, we shall come back to live in the new heaven and new earth. This is where the action is. So life is meant to be enjoyed here. But if you don't know, for lack of knowledge, my people perish. Then he said, ye shall know the truth. And the truth will cause you to enjoy liberty in the spirit, soul, and body. So there are amazing truths that when you get, you'll be amazed whether this has been the air that you've been living on for all these years. Then finally, the teachings that we are receiving, they make us better Christians, better ministers, better teachers of the word, so that wherever we are, we can do the work of the ministry well, and in a better dimension to bring many more people. You know, there are a lot of billions of people in the world who are grouping in darkness and religion. They do not know that there is true life and connection with the real living God. Many Christians are not busy about preaching the gospel because their lives are not different from that of the unbelievers. But when you discover these nuggets and you see the light, my God, you begin to become passionate about bringing truth to many other people. This is the purpose of the glad devotion. Every week we take a subject and teach you throughout the week on major platforms. This is no different except in the level of intensity and reality. We've been dealing with the subject of the biblical or right practice of giving in the kingdom. And I keep on saying that when I came into being as a son of God, I noticed this a lot about, about um, uh, giving, a lot of perspectives and people come out with scriptures and argue and argue and teachings here and there. And this one thinks that he is the right and this one is wrong and that is the right. You know, but I thank God for the privilege of being taken into a Bible study where he showed me the overall picture of many things he's doing in this world in the scriptures. And so I sit back and I see a lot of the practices and I know where they fall in place in the scriptures. And there's no controversy in the scriptures. This is what I'm bringing to you. On the subject of giving, there's no controversy. The only thing is that there are three levels of giving. And everyone is practicing giving 
at one of these levels. When you understand giving at these three different levels, you will not judge the other one. If there's anything you want, you rather give them truth so that they can move from one level to the next higher. They are giving at a babyhood level, giving as a spiritual adolescent, and giving as a mature son of God. And we have shared a lot along those lines. Especially the first two. And in our introductory session, we looked at the principle of progressive revelation. How God does that. So when we come into being, God allows us to practice giving as an obligation. Giving because that's how we feel uh, good to do. Then as we grow, he shifts our focus to giving as the engagement of the principle of sowing and reaping. Then he expects us to master that and move on to what we're about to look at today. If you miss the first two, please go back to our YouTube channel, get the messages and update yourself after today's session. Today we are going to move on to level three of giving as revealed in the scriptures. Father, Mali, Kobo, Digi, Baza, Kika, Roma, Santa, Kabaha. Thank you for virtues, abundance, ceaseless. I cause them to flood the earth and the lives of all our viewers, readers, and listeners now and in the ages to come. Hallelujah. Praise God. So the third level of the practice of giving is what I describe here is giving as a matured son or daughter of God. And it can be termed giving as the expression of your God being. In fact, this level of giving is alien to a great percentage of the body of Christ now. Because we are talking about the level of perfection. I find it challenging to share these dimensions of giving. But it is time to bring these truths to everyone. And for people to know and move forward in maturity. The third and the most mature level of practicing giving is to give as a God being. Giving is a nature of God. Giving is the expression of divinity. Listen, the Bible says that in the beginning, God created. So before what you call the beginning, there was God. So only creation has a beginning. God doesn't have a beginning. He's transcendent and eternal. If you look at it from the perspective of time, there were moments when there was only God and nothing else. Now when there was only God and nothing else, everything was God. For there to be creation, God had to give himself. Something had to come out of God. So in fact, creation and you yourself, you are a product of God's giving. And now, it has been God's plan to adopt the human species of mankind into himself as sons and daughters begotten by himself. People having his very nature. And this is what we come into being as when humans believe in Christ. When humans believe in Christ, we are born into being as sons of God, having the nature of God. And the moment we are born into being as beings with the nature of God, giving becomes the way of expressing our being. For instance, what I'm doing right now, I am giving. I'm dishing out of the abundance of the reserve of divine substance of knowledge, understanding, wisdom, counsel, power, love, grace, justice. I'm dishing out these things through the avenue of words. In my relationship with my wife, I'm giving. Relating with my children, I'm giving parenting. Relating with you, I'm giving. You understand? So we live by giving. So at that level of giving as a divine being, you are not giving as an obligation. 
You are not giving because you need to sow and reap. You are giving as an expression of your divinity. Praise God. So, let's start off now. So, this is the third level of giving. is giving as a mature son or daughter of God, which is given as the expression of your God being. I'm already reading the introduction in my spirit before I come to the main scripture. We said here that this is God's ultimate of giving for his sons and daughters in Christ. Fact, so if there's a giving to recommend, this is what the goal of devotion can stand and say, wherever you are, ensure you mature to the level where you give as the expression of your divinity. Because this is God's highest. Remember, there is the good will of God. There is the acceptable will of God. And then there is the perfect will of God. In this final age of the church's history on the earth, God is bringing us to the ultimate of divinity. Are you following? Okay. So, this giving is the ultimate of God's giving for his sons. And I put here that at this level, one does not give as an obligation, as I've said, but an expression of the divine nature of love to people and honor to the Father. Let's go to our main scripture and then I'll come back. Genesis chapter 12, verse 2 and 3. I'm reading to you from the Common English Bible. And it says that, I will make of you a nation and I'll bless you. So you see, in the Old Testament, they didn't have the nature of blessing as we do in Christ. So if they obeyed God, then God will invoke the ability to increase. So in Deuteronomy, it says that I'm the Lord that gave the power to make wealth. They didn't have it. But in Christ, we are blessed with all spiritual blessings. We can do these things as a nature. That doesn't stop us from engaging what they engaged for any physical increase, depending on the level of our understanding in the scriptures and our growth in Christ. Are you following? Let's go. So I'm reading again. I will make of you a great nation and bless you. God today does not say, I'll bless you. He tells you, you're already blessed in Christ. I will make you a name respected. And you will be a blessing. Candy, Borobaya. We are catching the thing now. I will bless those who bless you. And I will curse those who curse you. All the families of the earth will be blessed because of you. Now, let's look at this promise. Remember, this was the first time God is calling somebody to start a major project on the earth after Noah's flood. The judgment of the earth with a flood. God calls Abraham and he begins to tell him his ultimate. He says, Abraham, I'm calling you from here to take you somewhere. But I want you to know from the beginning that I'm not calling you just because of you. I have all the families of the earth in my mind. But I want to do a project with you. I'm choosing you. To, to work with you so I can use you as a sample substance to bring my blessing to all the families of the earth. And this is what I'm going to do. I am going to bless you. Candy Barabu Shakata. I am going to bless you and make you a blessing. Are you following this? So God said, I'm going to bless you. And then I will make you a blessing to all the families of the earth. Now remember, Abraham could only understand from the perspective of a man because he wasn't born again. So all the goal of God through Abraham is raising the tribe through them. Was to bless the children of Israel so much that through Israel, all the families of the earth will be blessed. Because humanity had already been reaping curses because of the fall of Adam. But God wants to show the world that he is a good God that brought mankind for good. Are you following? Now, plus or minus, they didn't follow the thing well. And God began to make a promise that these people are not following me well. I'm going to bring another seed. It's a holy seed. It's going to be a spiritual seed. And the Bible testifies that that seed of Abraham is Christ. What is the purpose of the seed? To get to a place where they'll be so blessed that through them, all the families of the earth will be blessed. Now, if you go to Galatians chapter 3 and um, you check 
from, I think, um, the 26th verse, it says that, For you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. So any one of us that is born again, we are sons of God, right? Faith in Christ Jesus. Then it says, For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. 1 Corinthians 12, 13. Once a human believes in Christ, the Holy Ghost takes him and baptizes him into Christ. So by that baptism, we are put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. So you see, the spiritual family of Abraham is more than just the Jews now. There's neither Jew nor Greek, neither slave nor free. It doesn't matter whether you're an employee or an employer. It doesn't make a difference. Neither male or female. So gender makes no difference. For you are all one in Christ. So in Christ, human tribes are broken down. Gender is broken down. Uh, occupational differences, levels of uh, classes in society is broken down. We are all one. Okay? Then it says, And if you are Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed. And as according to the promise. Which promise? The promise of being blessed to be a blessing to the whole world. This is the promise that has been fulfilled. Go to Ephesians chapter 1. I read to you in the previous episode, but we come back there. It says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus, who has blessed us. This is the promise. I will bless you and make you a blessing. So, who has blessed us huh, with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ? So, the promise he made to Abraham has now been fulfilled in that we are blessed. Now, what was the purpose of the promise? That when we are blessed, we will be a blessing. So, now if I come and I say, I'm a new creature. Okay, that's great. So, I am what? Blessed. What is the reason for my being blessed? Not being blessed so I can build many houses, live in different estates, buy different kinds of cars, travel around the world, make a name as one of the richest persons on the earth. No! No! What is the reason for my being blessed with all spiritual blessings? So that by me, the world will be blessed. Now, I'm, I'm careful because I'm using the world and I know why. Because to Abraham, the promise was to the families of the earth. Do you know what the families mean? Families here is not talking only about human families. It's talking about creations, stars, planets, plants, animals. So the new creature goes beyond just human families. To families of plants, families of animals, families of planets, water bodies. When we get there, you understand. So our, our being loaded with blessing is not only to bless humanity, but to bless the universe. That's why he says in Ephesians, we are the, the body of Christ, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. It is the virtue of God that we have, we have become as a blessing that we release to be a blessing to our cities, our nations, and everyone around. So at this level of maturity, you give as an expression of your blessed nature to people. So imagine somebody says, I'm a new creature. And so then, so no tithing, no first for nothing. He doesn't give to anything. Then so I'm, ble- I'm already blessed. He doesn't even know why he's called a new creature. If you are blessed, you should give more than those who are given by faith. So if tithe is 10%, you can give more than 10%. But you don't criticize the one that is given 10% because he's at adolescent level. If it is first fruit, you can give first fruit and much more. In fact, your givings are beyond these ones. But your givings include all of them plus more. Are you catching this thing? So at this level, maybe let me reduce it now. When we go higher, some are not yet there. Let's come down now because the church is now entering here. At this level, when it comes to people, why do you give? You give out of love because you are love you are expressing your love so if i'm giving to a poor person in jerusalem i'm not going to give because it's an obligation i give because i love him if i'm going to give to somebody i'm not going to give necessarily because i'm going to sow and reap but when i give i can't stop reaping because it's a principle are you catching it whether it is my intention or not when i give i'm going to have the reaping and so you see that we keep on multiplying and yet we are not giving because we must get. But giving to get is a good level. Are you following me? 
let me go and when I come. I will read some beautiful things here. So, okay, let me just round up on this point. I was saying that, why do we give them bring it to a lower level now for you so that later we'll talk about higher matters? I give to people because I love them. Now, why do I give givings to God? Because givings like tithes, first fruits, offerings in church, these are not givings that you are giving to men or giving into the project of God, like soul winning projects, gospel preaching projects. You are not necessarily giving to a man. Why do we do that? We do that to honor God. So, above we give as an honor, worship. Beneath we give as love. So you look at Proverbs chapter 3 verse 9. Oh, let me quickly look down for you. We go on a short break. <laughs> are you here today? Shout hallelujah. Oh, speak in tongues if you are full of the Holy Ghost and speak in tongues. If you are not just say, Father, I bless you. <laughs> mm. You see, if you are born again and full of the Holy Ghost, life ought to be always full of joy. Not this incline, decline, sitting down. On, no, life is full of joy. This is, we, we call it a good life devotion. Proverbs 3, 9. It says, Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thine increase. Did you see that? Honor the Lord. So I, I give the Lord tithe much more. I give the Lord my first fruit. I do all these things, but I do oh how I love to give to God. <laughs> oh, look at God and what He's made me a blessing. What can I do? Yes, I can say it with my mouth. Yes, I can think it, but I can also express it in my giving. David offered so much. King Solomon offered so much. Not because he wanted something. Abraham gave so much. Why? As an honor to God. The level has changed. I'll be right back after this break. Hallelujah. This book, Daddy Holy Spirit, is a classic on how to work with the Holy Spirit. Walking with the Holy Ghost is very important in being relevant in this final move. And this book is to help get the Holy Spirit restored to His place in our lives as our Father and restored to the church as the Father of the church and to be able to walk with Him. And everyone must have a copy. Your life will never be the same. Praise God. So put it that, yes, at this level, it is no more giving as a means to increase, but giving as a means of discharging our blessed nature into our world. Because we are the result of the promise made to Abraham. I just read that to you. We are now partakers of the divine nature, 2 Peter 1. In fact, before you go to verse 4, he says, according as his divine power has given to us all things, that pertain to life and godliness. So, if I'm giving, I'm not giving that God will give me. I'm giving because I already have all things. You see? I'm giving because I already have all things. But when I give because I already have all things, because in it is the principle of sowing and reaping, it will keep coming. So, you get to a level where you can't stop the things from coming. And people don't understand. They begin to think that you are doing something. But I'm not doing something. It is a life. Which life do you want? The one that you are holding on to and releasing most more and the one that you get to where you are expressing your life and you, you can't even stop collecting. When the Bible says that windows of heaven will be open and you have no room to contain, it is happening. But people think that when they say you have no room to contain, then when they open your bedroom, there will be pounds and dollars because they are thinking carnally. What is God's bank? Does God have a room to contain blessing? But what bank is he saving in? None. We're talking about dimensions of divinity. So if you have never seen somebody with money in all his room, that scripture is not fulfilled. No, that's not it. Oh, praise God. <laughs> all right, let's round up. We said here that this is the level of being the express manifestation of your spiritual state, of possessing all grace in all abundance, to always have all sufficiency in all things, to abound to every good work. Time will not permit me to read all this scripture, but go and read it. 2 Corinthians 9, 8. When you get to that level, so you begin by giving, 
as a result of um, obligation, you come to give him by faith. And when you master that level, my God, you get to a new level where you are all grace abounds towards you. That you always have all sufficiency to do every good giving. So you see, when I share like this on the good adventure, I know those ways a lot of calls come. Pastor, have this, 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 but people are beginning to call and call. You see, why are you calling? I'm not saying don't call. But you see, you think that, okay, now it's time for a spree. If you keep receiving, you will not grow. I didn't come here by calling on America to give, Europe to give. That's why I keep on telling African nations, stop going about begging. There are resources in your country. Learn to give. Learn to engage the principle. And you don't need to go about other countries begging. Anyway. Oh, praise God. Praise God. I think time has caught me up now. But I think you've learned a lot, haven't you? Well, so one goal of the Good Life Devotion is to bring the body of Christ to this state of matured teachings where you can do giving from this level. But if you give as a babe, you are good to go. Just mature to giving as an adolescent. Then you are good to go. Then mature to giving as a mature person. Well, wow. let's do this confession and we're out of it. Say with me. Oh dear Holy Ghost, I receive grace to rapidly mature in the truth of this message to arrive at giving as a God being in the name of Jesus. Begin to bless him right now. Father, we bless you. We give you praise. We glorify you for what you've taught us. We are so excited that you've changed our state by these truths in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Why have you been watching us? Wonderful viewer, wonderful listener or reader. It all begins. This is a kingdom something. You must be in the kingdom first. Yes, without being in the kingdom, you can do giving and receive as a natural process. But what will it benefit you if you gain the whole world? And you have no place in God's eternal kingdom. Receive Jesus today. Be born again today. Step into the kingdom today. What does it take? All it takes is to believe that Jesus came to this world and died. And God raised him up from the dead. And declare his lordship. The issues of your sins and whatever. You will be regenerated. So that person that sin will, be, will die. That's how we don't talk about it. doesn't mean that's not important. If you receive Christ, you'll be crucified with Christ right now. And a new person will emerge. Clean. Without any history. Let that happen to you by saying this after me with all your heart. Say, Jesus, I believe with all my heart that you came into this world, died, and was raised from the dead. And you ascended into heaven. Jesus, you are Lord. I declare you Lord of my life. I am born again. Hallelujah. Thank you for receiving Christ. You can call us and we can help you with materials to grow. Surely I'm going to come away again in our next uh, episode to take a look at how we combine all these. Where we are and what we should do. You can't miss that episode. I'm going to come to you next time. Till then, life is good. Enjoy. Thank you for joining today's episode of your favorite Good Life Devotion with Dr. David Bindan. The Good Life Devotion is proudly brought to you by friends and partners of the Final Global Movement. For more information on how to become a partner, call us on 053-444-6907 or log on to our website, finalglobalmovement.org. Become a partner today and contribute to the global spread of God's message for the now. Follow us on our various social media handles and you will be blessed. Don't miss the Good Life devotion on the channels displayed on your screen at the scheduled times. Till we come your way with the next episode of the Good Life devotion with Dr. David Bender. Life is good. Enjoy. Enjoy.